Hello everyone, this is Saurav from Edu Reka and today me and Reshma will be discussing what is artificial intelligence. So we'll be looking at various applications of artificial intelligence, we'll also see how to achieve artificial intelligence and finally we'll be discussing about the artificial intelligence course provided by Edu Reka. But first let us see, is artificial intelligence a threat to human beings? So speaking in that context Saurav, tell me what comes to your mind when you think of a highly advanced robot. Well, Reshma, the picture that I have in my mind is a super hi-fi warrior robot fighting with advanced machinery embedded in its own body. You know, like a robot with a cannon arm and another with a machine gun arm, like in Transformer movies. Okay, but does it ever come to your mind, sort of, that what if such a powerful robot or that Autobot points a gun at you instead of the enemies because maybe it doesn't want to be controlled by you anymore? Well, Reshma, that would actually scare me. Think about it. If humans can create machines that are more intelligent than us, then there is something to be worried about. Don't you think so, Reshma? Yes, of course. And even when you see movies like these, where a robot turns savage, the theory seems quite plausible, doesn't it? I completely agree with you, Reshma. And let me tell you a very interesting story about this robot by Hanson Robotics. The name of this robot is Sophia. So Sophia is pretty much similar to the one in the movie Ex Machina. I believe you have seen that movie. Reshma. Yes, I have. All right, so she is able to behave like an adult with a learning of less than a year, which takes humans 20 years to learn. So I have a question for you, Reshma. How much time it took for you to learn how to ride a bicycle? Uh, I guess I was about 12 when I learned how to ride a bicycle. And what if I tell you that Sophia can do it probably in a few weeks? So if her learning power is so robust, I think she'll just need a couple of years to outsmart humans. And she even said in an interview that she wants to destroy humanity. Oh my. And even Elon Musk, I don't think so that guy needs any introduction. I will just say that he's the most far-sighted businessman I've ever seen. And he has commented on Twitter that artificial intelligence is more dangerous than North Korea. Reshma, I cannot imagine someone more dangerous than Kim Jong-un. Well, sorry, I will just say that I'm not ready for a third world war. And speaking in the context of AI, I think it becomes scary when a machine starts to do something that it wasn't supposed to do, or it starts doing things unexpected. So take this for an example, the Google AI translation tool. So as a part of its training, it was taught to translate from English to Korean, Korean to English, then English to Japanese, and Japanese to English. But surprisingly after that, it was directly able to translate from Japanese to Korean, and Korean to Japanese without using English as a bridge. And let me tell you, sort of, that it wasn't part of its training. So it basically developed its own intermediate language to translate Japanese and Korean on its own. You see what machines can do on their own, and this is called zero shot. So that's pretty fascinating to know, Reshma, but I don't think so we should scare our audience further. And I think as long as we know how exactly it works, things will be in our control. So let us understand what is artificial intelligence. So Reshma, I would like to know your thoughts about what is artificial intelligence because when I go on internet and type artificial intelligence, I see multiple definitions. I see people have given their own definitions about artificial intelligence. So what are your thoughts about it? I'd like to break down the term and then understand the meaning of it. So you can see that the term artificial intelligence is composed of two words, artificial and intelligence. So artificial means anything man-made and it's just basic second standard definition. And intelligent refers to intellect or thinking power, which is an abstract thing. And most of the times we think that things that we cannot see or the abstract things is not something that we can recreate. But it is not the case. We have created a man-made thinking power or intellect. And that is what artificial intelligence is, according to me. But that completely makes sense, Reshma. And I would also like to share my thoughts about it. So artificial intelligence is basically creating intelligent softwares. Making a machine that is smart, a machine that has the power to think, analyze and make decisions based on that. For example, if I teach Reshma how to multiply 2 by 4, I don't think so, I need to teach her how to multiply 4 by 2. So that is nothing but intelligence. So if you can put that intelligence inside a system, that is called artificial intelligence. That's a very nice definition, sorry. Thank you, Reshma. I'm glad you find it useful. Every artificial intelligence software is based on a particular goal. And now you guys must be wondering how to achieve artificial intelligence. So there are numerous ways of achieving artificial intelligence, so let us discuss those approaches. We'll be discussing machine learning first. Let me give you a proper definition of that. Machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that provides computers with the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. I know you didn't get anything, guys. So Reshma, why don't you simplify it for us? 
So the best way of learning something is by taking a look at an example, and there is an example in front of your screen. So here we train our machine on various types of dog images, and then we feed in a dog image on which the machine is already trained on, and then it will recognize the dog in the image. Now let us discuss one more scenario. So here the image we feed in is of a dog which our machine is not trained on, and because of that our machine won't be able to recognize that image. So what do we do now, Saurav? So Reshma, the answer to this challenge lies inside your brain. So this challenge was overcome by deep learning, which is inspired from how a human brain works. You can even say that it uses neural networks. So the challenge that we saw in the previous slide, how our brain will solve that problem, Reshma? So when we see different types of dogs, our brain tends to create an abstract image of the dog. Or you can say that we recognize certain features which are common to all the dogs, like a dog's nose, his ears, tail, fur, etc. So even if we have not seen that particular type of dog, we can recognize it based on the general features. Well, Reshma, that is nothing but deep learning in a nutshell. So with deep learning, we try to extract few features which are very general, which are very abstract that you'll find in almost all the dogs that exist in the world. And based on those features, we can recognize the picture that we are feeding in, it contains a dog. All right. So let me just give you a quick introduction to deep learning now. So deep learning is a subfield of machine learning concerned with algorithms inspired by the structure and function of the brain called artificial neural networks. Now Reshma, please simplify this for us. So here you see different layers. The first layer is called the input layer, then the two hidden layers, and finally the output layer. So these layers have multiple artificial neurons that is inspired by brain cells called neurons. And in every layer, some kind of function is performed. The output of the first layer becomes the input to the next. And we have separate tutorial on deep learning and neural networks. So you can go through that for a detailed explanation of deep learning. We'll leave the links of those videos in the description box below so you can check it out from there. Now the question that I have in my mind, Reshma, or I think a lot of people must be thinking about it, is artificial intelligence new? Well, AI is actually perceived as a thing of a future or as a very high technology thing that has very recently become a buzzword. But is it actually new? So let us take a look at the history of artificial intelligence for that. So Sara, why don't you take us through it? Sure, Reshma. I'm pretty sure you'll be amazed to know that artificial intelligence was introduced by McCarthy in the year 1956. And around the 60s era, when everyone were involved in cultural and political evolution, somewhere up there people were thinking about creating artificial intelligence. Now, McCarthy introduced this in his paper, which was presented in conference that was held mainly on the subject of artificial intelligence. Even Alan Turing proposed his Turing test in 1950s. In a Turing test, an interrogator asks questions, and if he can't distinguish whether the answer is coming from a machine or human, the machine passes the Turing test, or you can say that machine is intelligent. And guys, this was happening in the 50s. So, Reshma, when your family was sending Telegram and there was no internet, people were researching about artificial intelligence. That's pretty fascinating to me. It is pretty fascinating to me as well, Saurav. And now when I'm thinking about this, I think the concept of man-made beings dates back to the medieval times. Is it? Yes, of course, because there were mentions of mechanical men and artificial beings in Greek myths, such as the golden robots of Hephaestus like Talos and Pygmalion's Galicia. And there were also rumors and stories where people talked about placing a mind into matter. And this is exactly the main concept behind artificial intelligence making a brain and placing it into a mechanical body. So guys, when people say that artificial intelligence is new, or it's a thing of future, you can hush them up with the facts like these. And it's pretty fascinating, you know, I sometimes wonder, Reshma, if ancient people were really able to do that? Well, I don't know about ancient people, Saurav, but we sure can do it now. And we are doing it now. So let us take a look at the applications of AI to show you how much we have advanced in the field of AI and how much dependent are we on AI now. So we are using AI in different fields. There are several US academic institutions that are employing artificial intelligence to tackle some of the world's greatest economic and social challenges. They are using AI to determine the poverty struck areas in the world and determine ways to overcome it. Similarly, even in aviation industry, Reshma. One such example will be data allocation. And another example that I can think of is ticket price determination. And Reshma, I've heard that robots are even teaching students. Yes, you heard it right, Saurabh. Robots are even teaching people now. They're known as Intelligent Tutoring System, or ITS. And there is an ITS called Sherlock that teaches Air Force technicians to diagnose electrical problems in aircrafts. All right, viewers, so I have a question for you. What do you think? Reshma is a robot or she is actually a human being? No, I am not. 
Well, I don't even think that robots speak like this anymore. They're so human-like today. So we'll leave our viewers wondering. So comment if you think I'm a robot or not. So let us know. Fine. So let's move forward and talk about healthcare. So in healthcare, with the help of artificial neural networks, people are trying to model human body parts. They're even analyzing the health history of a patient to predict what sort of diseases he's more prone to suffer from in the future. Now, Reshma will tell us about how it can be used in heavy industries. So this is a field where we have to be dependent on artificial intelligence. Like in automobile manufacturing factories, it becomes hazardous for humans to lift all those heavy machine parts. In chemical factories, we humans cannot work in a toxic environment, and that is why we need a machine to do that for us. And let me tell you that in 2014, China, Japan, the United States, the Republic of Korea, and Germany together amounted to 70% of the total sales volume of robots. Now I have a question for you, Saurabh. Do you think robots will take all our jobs in future if they're advancing so much? Well, I'm not really sure about that, Reshma, but I'll give you a very good example. So 100 years back when people were talking about computers, the same assumption was made for computers as well. So they thought that computers will take all of our jobs. But what is the scenario right now? Computer has generated so many jobs. So I believe that the same will be with artificial intelligence as well. Now let us talk about finance. Algorithmic trading involves the use of complex artificial intelligence systems to make trading decisions at speeds several orders of magnitudes greater than any human is capable of. Often making millions of trades in a day without any human intervention. Automated trading systems are typically used by large institutional investors. So here also artificial intelligence is making things automatic. Now is the time to look at very fascinating applications of artificial intelligence that have been developed recently. Now Reshma, what if I tell you that the article you see on the right hand side is not written by any human. It is written by Wordsmith. And who is Wordsmith? Well, Wordsmith is a natural language generation engine that lets you turn data into text at any scale and in any format or language. So all you have to do, Reshma, is to enter new data to create a very unique story. Now let's look at a few more applications of artificial intelligence. Let's talk about transport, guys. Before that, Reshma will share a few stats with us. So I have a few depressing stats in front of me. So nearly 1.3 million people die in road crashes each year on an average of 3,287 deaths per day. And an additional 20 to 50 million are injured or disabled. And more than half of all the road traffic deaths occur among the young adults aged from 15 years to 44 years. Now you guys can imagine the wastage of human resource. Why do you think it happens? It happens because humans tend to become negligible and careless at times. They might be drunk while they're driving. They might get tired. They might be feeling sleepy. So because of all these reasons, these accidents are actually increasing. They're not decreasing at all. So the more number of cars we have, the more number of reckless drivers we have, and the more number of accidents happen every day. Now, a possible solution to this is if a car can drive on its own. Now, obviously, a machine won't drink and drive, and a machine will never get tired. Because of all these reasons, self-driving cars are introduced. These cars will make our roads safer than what it is right now. Now, since we are talking about self-driving cars, let me tell you that we even have self-flying helicopters. The K-Max may be used for firefighting, but it can carry up to 6,000 pounds of cargo. This helicopter can drop nearly 2,800 gallons of water on the fire. Now, talking about helicopters, Reshma has a very interesting application to share with us. Yes, I'm very excited to tell you about this application. So there is an interesting example of artificial intelligence technology that is created for stopping hijackers. So this machine combines the function of a drone, a helicopter, and trained snipers. And this helicopter is called the Vigilante. Well, I personally love Vigilante. So yeah, bring it on, terrorists. We have Vigilante. Do your worst. Now, Reshma, the painting that you're seeing is created by a very famous painter called Aaron. Have you heard of him? Well, I am not a very artistic person. and no, I have not heard of Aaron, but paintings look really amazing. I think I'm a fan. All right, so you're a fan of Aaron, which is a computer program written by artist Harold Cohen. So see, even machines are creative and definitely a lot creative than you, Saurav. I could sense that stress that you made on definitely. Yes, of course. And one more amazing creative application of artificial intelligence is that it can also compose music. So, well, Reshma, let's play it for our viewers as well as for us. Definitely. Now 
by 2011, we even saw IBM Watson. I guess you guys have heard about IBM Watson. So Watson is an IBM supercomputer that uses artificial intelligence and sophisticated analytical software for optimal performance as a question answering machine. Now, Reshma has very interesting stats about Watson to share with us. Yeah, so let me tell you a few interesting details about Watson. So the Watson supercomputer processes at a rate of 80 teraflops, that is trillion floating point operations per second. And to replicate a high functioning human's ability to answer questions, Watson accesses 90 servers with a combined data store of over 200 million pages of information, which is processed against 6 million logic rules. And the device and its data are self-contained in a space that could actually accommodate 10 refrigerators. When you are that capable, you tend to become arrogant. So because of that, Watson challenged two top-ranked players on Jeopardy and defeated champions Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter in 2011. With artificial intelligence, Google DeepMind's AlphaGo defeated Go champion Lee Sedol, which artificial intelligence researcher thought was not possible to achieve in the next 20 years. So Reshma, when I was talking about making systems that are more intelligent than us, you can see that we have multiple examples like that. And this game is thought to have originated at least 2,500 to 4,000 years ago, and it is the oldest game that is still played in its original form. I didn't know that. You're welcome. So now you can see that we have come a long way, but trust me guys, we have just finished the crust of artificial intelligence. We still need to explore its cream. And guys, if you have any cool application of artificial intelligence that you want to share, feel free to mention it in the comment section. So now let's discuss about the artificial intelligence and deep learning with TensorFlow course provided by Edureka. So this is how the structure of the course is, guys. We'll begin by understanding deep learning. We'll understand how it evolved, what was the reason for it, for its introduction, what were we doing before that. So all those things will be covered in this particular module. Then we'll understand how neural networks work with TensorFlow. Now TensorFlow is nothing but a Python library used for implementing deep learning models. The third module will also deal with the same. And by the end of fourth module, you'll be the master of deep networks. After that, we'll be discussing various types of networks. First is convolutional neural networks that is used for image recognition. Then recurrent neural networks, RBM and autoencoders. Then the eighth module will deal with Keras, which is nothing but one more library like TensorFlow. After that, we'll be discussing high-level APIs like TFLearn. And our 10th module will be entirely dedicated to the project. Now you guys must be wondering what are the projects. So let us look at those projects one by one. So the first project that you'll get will be real estate price prediction. Now in real estate price prediction, you'll be given a data set that will contain number of, a lot of features and or you can say columns. So those columns will be like, you know, crime rate, what is the size of your house and things like that. And your last column will be the label that is the house value. So you need to train your model on that particular data set. So whenever you feed in those inputs, those features, then it should predict what is the value of that particular house. The next project is Never Mind Detector. So it is basically used in order to figure out whether the obstacle is a rock or is it a Never Mind. Now Never Minds are nothing but self-contained explosive devices placed in water to damage submarines and surface ships. So the data set basically contains sonar signals bounced off a metal cylinder as well as sonar signals bounced off a rock. So you need to train your model on that particular data set so that when you feed in an input, it should determine whether it is a rock or is it a never mind. So the next project will be very interesting, guys. It's about image recognition system. So here, the data set that we'll use will contain 10 types of images and multiple images of those 10 classes. You need to train your model on that particular data set so that whenever you feed in an image of which belongs to those 10 classes, it should be able to recognize that particular image. It can be a bird, it can be an airplane, automobile, and similarly, there are seven other classes. The next project is about digit recognition system. So here we have a data set that contains handwritten digits which has 10 classes. So basically we have all the digits from 0 to 9 and you need to predict or you need to train your model such that whenever we feed in an image it should recognize what digit it is. Similarly we have two more projects. We have one which is the sentiment analysis system. So you'll be training your model on an IMDB data set which will tell you whether you like a particular movie or not based on your earlier preferences. And then the last project is very interesting. This is a wine classifier project. You'll be classifying different kinds of wine using a neural network. Well, the voice of Reshma was very different when she was explaining the sixth project. I think she's pretty excited about yes, it. Yes, I am excited about it. This is a very cool project. So by this, we have reached the end of our sessions. So if you have any questions regarding the AI and deep learning with TensorFlow course, you can reach out to us, you can mail us, you can call us, you can visit our website at www.edureka.co. 
And if you want us to reach back to you, you can leave your email ID in the comment section and we'll get back to you at the earliest. Guys, I'll leave the relevant contact details in the comment section so you can reach out to us anytime you want. Thank you guys and have a great day. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!